For more than 300 years, men have raced thoroughbreds. Through prose, poetry, and art, admiration has been expressed for the speed, stamina, and courage of the horse, and almost all generations have selected equine heroes to remember with affection. Our knowledge of early champions must rely on writers and artists, but fortunately motion pictures have made timeless the exploits of more recent heroes. In 1951, the great Calumet champion Citation by Bull Lee from the Hyperion Mare Hydroplane was six years old and nearing the end of a great racing career. At three, he had towered over his opposition, winning the Triple Crown against his own age group and the Jockey Club Gold Cup against Older. On July 14, 1951, in California, Citation became the first thoroughbred to pass the million-dollar mark in purse money earned, his climactic race being the Hollywood Gold Cup. This was his last race, his 32nd win out of 45 races. These many years later, most respected observers still regard Citation as among the greatest of our thoroughbred champions. When he arrived back home in May 1955, Swaps had just become the first California bred and owned horse to have won the Kentucky Derby. He was an instant celebrity. His owner, Rex Ellsworth, and trainer, Mesh Tenney, were called cowboys by the Eastern press and were not bound by racing traditions and practices. They ignored the remaining Triple Crown events, the Preakness and Belmont Stakes, and returned to California enticed by rich purses and the friendly atmosphere of home. Elegant and graceful, Swaps was a son of Cullet from the Beaupere Mare Iron Reward. He remained under serious training by Mesh Tenney for his primary rival at home was determined, who had made his triumphant return from winning the Kentucky Derby a year earlier. Bought at auction in Kentucky by his owner, Andrew Crevelin, Determine was the first gray horse to win the Derby, and a meeting of the two classic champions was eagerly awaited. The battleground was to be the $100,000 Californian stakes, and the Hollywood Park paddock was crowded with celebrities. A film was being discussed with Gary Cooper to play Rex Ellsworth, and General Omar Bradley was the ranking member of the many Swaps admirers present that day. Swaps would run with jockey Dave Erb substituting for regular rider Bill Shoemaker, suspended for a minor riding infraction, and would be meeting older horses in early summer, usually considered a disadvantage to three-year-olds. None of it mattered. Dave Herb was an able substitute for Shoemaker, and Swaps collared the pace-setting Mr. Gus when he was ready and did what he had to do to hold off the late charge of Determine. Swaps stopped the electric timer in a new world's record of 140 and 2 fifths for the mile and the 16th, and seemed to have plenty of unexpected energy left as he returned to an ovation. If ever one thoroughbred provided national attention for a racetrack, it was Swaps for Hollywood Park. And just after his retirement from racing, a statue honoring the beautiful chestnut was dedicated at the Inglewood track. He had earned the tribute. Speakers at the ceremony recalled Swap's Horse of the Year campaign in 1956. In the Inglewood handicap that year, he carried 130 pounds and gave 15 to Mr. Gus and 9 pounds to Bobby Broccato. Mr. Gus would beat Nashua in the Woodward that year, and Bobby Broccato had just won the Santa Anita handicap when Swap's was injured and could not compete. Swap's very way of going seemed lighter, requiring less effort than other thoroughbreds. Though not really extended, he ran the mile at a 16th Inglewood in world's record time of a minute 39 seconds flat. In the Gold Cup at a mile and a quarter, Swaps at 130 gave Mr. Gus 13 pounds and Porterhouse 20 as Langolan Stables pair attempted a double team effort. 
Many horses we call great have failed to carry 130 pounds to victory. The great Citation never won with that much weight, and Nashua, arch rival of Swaps at three, was always defeated with as much as 130 pounds up. Swaps carried 130 pounds six times and won. When he was healthy, nothing seemed to matter. He was as supple and handy and graceful as a greyhound. And when, after holding him in tight restraint, Bill Shoemaker finally let him run, Swap's acceleration past good horses was exhilarating. When retired, Swaps held the largest collection of world speed records in history, five from one mile to the mile and five-eighths of the Sunset Handicap. It was his last start at Hollywood Park, and it was a romp. Although there were nine horses in the Sunset Field, only win betting was allowed, a dubious practice never again allowed by the California Racing Commission. Of course, Swaps had reduced the competition to near unknowns, and Shoemaker let him float along on the lead from wire to wire. The memory of that incredible season of 1956 still uplifts those he touched. It was but a few weeks after this peak of brilliance that he fractured his left hind leg in a mishap in New Jersey and barely survived. After weeks in a sling and a long recuperation, Swaps lived to sire champions, but none as good as he. So the statue stands for courage and class, as well as superior performance. He made his farewell to racing at Santa Anita, where he was never defeated. With Tenny on the pony and Shoemaker up, Swaps proudly paraded on a gloomy day befitting the occasion. Probably one of the soundest, toughest colts in history, Round Table had a complete symmetry and absolute lack of blemish. He raced in the colors of Travis Kerr, running at ten different tracks at age three alone. He had been purchased at three from A.B. Hancock of Claiborne Farm in Kentucky, where Round Table was full, being by Prince Quillo from Knight's Daughter. After a very successful year at three, Round Table carried top weight of 130 pounds in the next year's Santa Anita Handicap. Moving across town to Hollywood Park, round table number three, with his regular rider, Bill Shoemaker Up, was assigned 132 pounds in the Argonaut handicap. So incensed was owner Kerr at this heavy impost so early in the season that, although round table was allowed to run this day, he never again competed at Hollywood Park. He was meeting tough, seasoned horses over a track which favored speed, and this race indicates how weight can affect even a great thoroughbred. They're off and running. At the start of Shawnee, breaking Going the past the stands the first time, it is apparent that Shoemaker is content to play the waiting game. He notes that how now, Shawnee and Tarang, all are showing early speed and setting a fast pace. He lets them go and settles for fifth. If Shoe forces round table at this point, he will lose precious ground going wide around the turn. Round table is fifth by a length and pit Showing extreme confidence in his mount, Shoemaker holds round table in fifth position going down the back stretch. He's saving him at every pole, knowing that with 132 pounds up, he cannot ask for more than one big run from his horse. Heading into the far turn, Shoemaker sees that the time is now to go after the leaders. He takes round table to the outside of Like Magic. Then, still saving ground, he moves past Tarang on the inside. He must now decide whether to go inside of the two leaders or play it safe and go around them for the drive. How now shows he still has plenty of run and won't give up that rail. So Shoemaker heads round table to the outside and starts his final drive for home. And now it's round table and how now? They're coming down to the wire, round table, but how now holding on game lead. It's going to be 
He won, but just barely. Roundtable was the best grass horse of his time, and maybe of all time. Horse of the year in 1958, he was grass champion three years in a row. Some of his races were simply amazing. In the 1958 Lawrence Armour at Arlington Park in Chicago, Round Table was boxed and blocked almost all the way behind Asia Clem and Hoop Band. Into the stretch, Bill Hartack found room and set sail after Clem. Round Table carried 130 pounds this day to 110 assigned to Clem. It looked impossible, but Hartak laid his silken nose in the finish line at the last possible moment. And the are to the era, going to the lead, followed by round table, wiggle, terrain, Jack Hedge, anxious moment. In the 1959 Arlington Handicap, round table number one was the defending champion having won in 1958 with 130 pounds this year he carried 132 and faced 1957 winner manassas who carried but 112 bill shoemaker rode here they come at round table leading by the length of a half manassas is second on the rail we're ready closing round third in anxious moments at round table along the rail manassas on the outside we're ready they come to the wire round table wins by a net manassas Roundtable won 14 of 16 starts on grass in an era of few grass courses and large competitive fields. He carried 130 pounds or more on 25 occasions and established or equaled 16 world, American, or track records. He retired as leading money earner and kept that title until surpassed by the great gelding Kelso. A.B. Hancock was acutely aware of Roundtable's classic pedigree when he sold him for $175,000. That sale at Hialeah early in 1957 carried an agreement that the colt would return to Claiborne Farm to stand at stud when his racing days were over. Roundtable lived a long, productive life in the bluegrass, siring more than 80 stakes winners surrounded by friends and admirers. Northern Dancer, the most successful racehorse and stallion bred in Canada, could have been a greater bargain than Round Table, for he was priced at $25,000 as a yearling of 1962, but there were no buyers. By spring 1964, Northern Dancer, trained by Horatio Luro and still owned by his breeder, E.P. Taylor, was preparing for the Kentucky Derby. Favored for this derby was Hill Rise, a tall, long-striding Californian. On the first Saturday in May, Northern Dancer pranced out sporting Saddlecloth 7, while the favorite carried number 11. It was to be a thrilling derby, a 7-11 derby. And they're off. Breaking from the gate, Mr. Brick on the inside, Will Red on the outside, Royal Shuck on the extreme outside. The run for the Roses started well and held no surprises through the early running. Mr. Brick, Royal Shuck, the Scoundrel, and Will Rad made the pace first time past the stands, with Hill Rise under Bill Shoemaker going easily in sixth place, just ahead of Northern Dancer and Bill Hartack. Royal Shuck on the outside, Mr. Brick on the inside. As they went into the first turn, Hartack, who rode a brilliant race, moved Northern Dancer into sixth place, and from this point to the wire would see to it that Hill Rise would never head his mount. With Hill Rise, further back it's Mr. Moonlight, Roman Brother, extra swell. Then it's Ishkuda and Dandy K. Northern Dancer is not yet three years old on this day and stands just now above 15 there. hands, but has Mr. a stride that looks two sizes too big and a quickness Royal not equaled by Hill Rise. Now Will Red is moving up. The scoundrel moves on the outside to fourth. On the inside, Quadrangle is fifth. Northern Dancer is now sixth. Hill Rise is seventh on the outside. Mr. Moonlight on the inside. Nearing the far turn, Hartak sends the Northern turn. Dancer after the leaders. He'll rise, checked momentarily by racing traffic, John takes off after the flying Canada. Canadian. Northern Dancer has now moved to third and also moving to challenge. Further back, quadrangle, Hill Rise moving on the outside. Into the long stretch, it's Northern Dancer taking command with Hill Rise coming on the outside. Northern Dancer on the lead by two lengths and Hill Rise driving courageously under extreme pressure from Shoemaker.
The big horse keeps trying, but at the finish, it's the Canadian Bulldog winning it by a neck. He'll rise second and the scoundrel third. The time of two minutes established a new derby record. Two weeks later at Pimlico, the two rivals met only four others for the second jewel in racing's triple crown. Trainer Horatio Luro and Jockey Hartak were brilliant in their handling of Northern Dancer. At the start of the Preakness, the Canadian Colt was sent from the gate smartly and raced third to Big Pete and Quadrangle to remain in good striking distance. Hill Rise, meanwhile, raced outside the three into the first turn and never seemed to find his best stride. Only a few people close to Northern Dancer knew that the colt had been running on a patched hoof to alleviate a quarter crack suffered in training, and no one knew whether or not this then revolutionary treatment would be successful. At the final turn, Northern Dancer turned back his final challenger and coasted home. Quadrangle, who finished fourth this day, would come back to win the Belmont Stakes and prevent a triple crown sweep. But the best horse ever bred in Canada had no match here in Maryland. Northern Dancer's owner, Edward Plunkett Taylor, is the world's all-time leading breeder of thoroughbreds, having sent out more than 200 stakes winners. Northern Dancer was foaled at Taylor's Winfields Farm near Toronto, being sired by the magnificent Nearctic. His dam was the native dancer mayor Natalma, and Northern Dancer would retire to one of the most phenomenal stud careers of any thoroughbred ever, standing at a fee of $225,000, no guarantee. His last race was the 105th renewal of the oldest race on the American continent, the Queen's Plate. The Lieutenant Governor of Canada would later present to the plate winner the traditional gift offered each year by the ruling English monarch, 50 gold guineas. Canadian racing fans turned out to cheer a national champion. They were not disappointed, for Northern Dancer easily sped away from a retreating band of opponents to win Canada's most cherished classic by seven and a half lengths. A rap tendon in New York forced his early retirement, but Northern Dancer met and defeated the best of his generation.